All right, finally, the full overview of the electrical system. Almost everything's in now, so it's a good time to go through it before we start putting up the bed frame, getting everything secured in and locked up. So we'll be able to step through piece by piece, kind of go over some of the wiring, the batteries themselves, the inverter, the charger, just all the fun little things here. This is perfect for any new DIYer, especially an electrical system. I know that this is a scary part, but I promise you, if you do your research, it's easier than you think. All right, if you guys have been paying attention, I've released a couple of videos as far as it goes to the electrical. I believe the inverter charger was one of them, as well as wiring in the van. But this is actually going to be a full overview of the system that uh, we installed with our van build. Uh, this was very time consuming. The fact that the research took a while um, was also a bit nerve wracking. This did take a lot of time. Uh, there was a lot of research put in this, make sure the components all work together, make sure they all work to the same voltage level. Uh, the type of wiring especially took a while, make sure that I got everything right for the amount of amps that pass through these cables. And we'll go step through that. Uh, I do have a background in electrical engineering, so I made it a little bit easier here, but this is something that somebody without that background can totally do. Uh, my wiring's a little sloppy right now. Be able to clean that up in a little while, but this is just the perfect time. Our bed frame's not in yet. Everything's kind of exposed. Just kind of step through each individual part, run through each cable. I, I know for me, that was a bigger part of this whole thing was taking a while to get the cabling right, the cable sizing and everything, as well as each individual component. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna step by piece by piece, and we're gonna start here with the batteries. So these are two 12.8 volt, 280 amp hour batteries. These are wired in parallel. So if you don't know what that means is our negative terminals are connected together and our positive terminals are connected together. What that does is it actually increases the capacity of the batteries. So you have either going in parallel or in series. If you're gonna go in series, that means your negative gets connected to your positive and that changes it from a 12 volt system to a 24 volt system. When you go in parallel, it goes from 280 amp hours per battery to a total of 560 amp hour batteries. This is pretty common throughout van builds. You want a 12 volt system. A lot of your components are 12 volts. For instance, we have a 12 volt air conditioning system. Our vent fan is going to be 12 volts. Our water pump, our, our oven kick on. A lot of the components throughout this system is 12 volts. That's because that's what batteries are pretty much set at. Otherwise, you'd have a ton of batteries in here to get it up to a higher voltage. So I'm going to run through some of these components here since we're a little bit closer up. The number one thing to note is the cable size. So with the cable size, I actually went for 2 watts. So that's 2 slash 0, 2 watt cable for the batteries. These are higher amp rating. There's going to be a lot of amps that get pulled out of these batteries. What's very important is to make sure that your cable size is higher than the actual amps that you think are going to be getting pulled out of. Uh, it's better for your fuses to blow before your actual cables themselves. It's it's easier to replace a fuse than it would be cable. So anything that you see that's these thicker cables that are directly coming off of the battery itself are going to be two odd. Those are pretty decent sized battery cables. Uh, you'll see that as well in like cars. So cars have a very similar size battery. Uh, you'll see the same kind of cabling there. So again, two odd cables for your batteries. The next step we're actually going to go through is the positive line. You can see right here, this is actually a fuse. So there's a little term block that gets mounted on the positive terminal and gets connected to a fuse. And this is just a little cable cover here to, to cover up the top of this. But this fuse passes through, so it goes right through this fuse here. If there's any current draw that's higher, I believe this is a 150 amp fuse. So if current goes out here and it's pulling 150 amps, first off, something's crazy wrong there. But the second thing is this will blow before the cable goes. So that'll help protect all the electrical components throughout the system as well as the battery itself. So it won't try and like power draw too quickly. So that's what this part is. It's just a little term block mounting and a fuse. And then the next part is just again another two watt cable here that goes to our battery disconnect. This is just a little switch that can go on and off to di disconnect our batteries from the system. The second part of our battery here is going to be the negative terminal. As you can see, the batteries are connected negative to negative, and then it goes up through this big old block here. So what is this big block? So this is actually a shunt, and this shunt is a, a battery monitoring system. So what's really cool about this is you put this in series with your negative terminal. So you can see our negative battery line goes up to the shunt and the other side passes through to our negative terminal bus bar up here. This shunt is here to monitor our system. So what you can see is this shunt here has a couple of cables coming up. This red one here goes to our DC fuse panel to power the actual monitor face. And these cables here actually would send the data to the monitor. And this is what this is. So this is a Renergy battery monitor. It is fantastic. You can see we have our actual amp hours here is 560. Let me see if I can get a light on here for you guys. So what you can see is this is the Renogy battery monitor. It has the actual capacity of our battery system. It shows how full it is. The coolest thing about this is it tells you your actual voltage on your battery system. So you can see any voltage drop or anything as you power on your electronics. You can see how many amps are being drawn out. 
So right now we have kind of a parasitic load of 0.35 amps. So there's a couple of electronics that are pulling things. I'm fine with that. It's only pulling about four or five watts when it's off, especially with the inverter being off right now. Um, it tells you how much time, this is the coolest thing. It tells you how much time you actually have left on your battery as well. So this monitor was super important for us because we could be out in the middle of nowhere and we have no idea how much time we have left on our batteries, what we need to save and conserve. So this was super important for us to get. It's one of the best investments and it was super easy to install too. It comes just like this. You just mount it onto your wall and you just plug it right into your system. It's fantastic. And that was the overview of the batteries. Again, this is pretty straightforward. It's just two battery system. These are just bigger. I got these on sale about a thousand dollars, just shy of a thousand dollars for both of these. So that was a great deal. These are lithium iron phosphate. So lipo batteries. These are fantastic. They have uh, just a bunch of monitoring systems throughout these as well. So, you know, voltage drop, all of those issues that you typically see with some of those lead acid batteries or anything like that, you don't really get with these. So these were super important in our build as well. Now with that, you've already heard me say the word bus bar. So what is a bus bar? Well, it's actually a place where all of your electronics get connected to. That'd be your batteries, your inverter, your air conditioning unit, your fuse panels, everything gets connected here. So there are two bus bars here. One's going to be your positive terminal or red in this case. And one's going to be your negative terminal or black in this case. What you do is you tie each of your major components into this bus bar. So up close and personal with our bus bar, you can see we have four turn points on each of our bus bars. So the first one in our case is gonna be our battery. This one is actually our inverter next. And then after that is gonna be our charger. So this is a battery charger for solar and alternator. And then after that is gonna be the air conditioning unit and our DC fuse panel. So all of our charging is up on the front and our load is up on the back. That goes for the same thing on the negative term block. Four turn points here, we mirrored the same exact layout. So you got battery, your inverter, that's gonna be the charging. So you have to tie all of your negative turn points. That'd be the solar panels, the car battery negative, and then the actual negative terminal from your charger here as well. And then are your load. So this is important to plan out. You can see we have a couple of nodes here that have a couple of wires on. It's very important to plan out how much load and how many cables you actually have on here. Part of me kind of wishes I had an extra negative terminal for my car battery, but it'll be okay to tie into the same negative term point here. But one of the things that's super important is always plan out how many electronics you're gonna have. So that be your batteries, your inverter, your chargers, your load, and make sure that you have the proper amount of term points. It's easier to plan ahead and have extra spaces than have limited spaces. All right, so next up, we're actually gonna be talking about our charging system. So in this case, we have technically two slash three of them. Our two main ones are actually gonna be this piece of equipment and this piece of equipment here. So what this piece of equipment is, is actually the shore power. This is an inverter and a charger. So this takes power from shore, puts it into this piece of equipment that goes straight to our bus bar, as we talked about, and charges the batteries. So we're able to plug into any regular terminal, so any regular outlet from, say, a home 120 volt outlet, and plug it right into the van back here. This will turn on once this is plugged in, take from shore power, and it'll start charging our batteries. So now that it's plugged in, what this is doing is taking power from the house, converting it from AC or alternating current to DC direct current because that's what the battery operates on. Your typical components, your appliances in your house run off of alternating current. So in, in the van, you don't really do that with a lot of your stuff. So you have to convert that down. Some of our stuff will also be going off of alternating current. So that's why this piece of equipment is so cool and we'll get into that. But you want to make sure that you have a proper inverter that goes ahead and charges your battery appropriately. And let's get into that now. So I've already kind of done an intro video on this inverter charger. This is the Amp Invent Inverter Charger. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Essentially, it's just a test. We've had this in here now for about a month and it has worked fantastically. What's so cool about this piece of equipment? Well, there's two things. One is the inverting and one is the charging. So we'll step through the charging first since we already started going through the batteries. So this is a 2000 watt inverter and a charger that's able to put out 50 amps of charging at max load. So that's really good for our system. When it comes to charging, you want about 10% of your battery size to be charging. So in this case, 50 amps is right up our alley. In this case, we wanted to go ahead and get the same size cables as the battery to make sure that we're covering all the current that could be passing through this piece of equipment into our bus bar. So these are two cables as well that go and get connected from this piece of equipment into our bus bars. Now, the cool thing about this is when you plug into your shore power, you're gonna charge your batteries no matter what. The other part of it is the inverter side. So when you're plugged into shore power, you're actually not gonna be using your batteries to power your AC equipment. You're gonna be using that shore power because what this does is it lets it pass through this system still as AC. So you're able to power, in our case, our fridge is gonna be AC operated at all times, anytime you're charging a shore power and not draw off your batteries. In most cases, you'll be able to not only charge up your batteries, 
and do your fridge at the same time. It's just so cool to do that. And so the cool thing to know about this inverter is actually it's 2000 watt inverter. That means standard, it'll be able to handle 2000 watts. Max peak, it'll be able to handle 6000 watts, which if you guys don't know electrical wise, that means that you're able to power easily an espresso machine, your fridge, and a blender at the same time. And a lot of inverters, the higher you go, the better it is. For us, 2000 watts was the perfect size. So it's super easy to set up. We literally just mounted it on here. We were able to tie in our AC components super easily, wire it up and plug it into our bus bars. This thing has been the delight so far. I actually really, really love this piece of equipment. All right, stepping into our next piece of charging equipment. This is again, another Rena G piece of equipment. This thing is really cool. It actually is allowing your alternator from your car batteries. You can see we have a couple of cables running down that way to charge your batteries. So you're able to plug these cables in. They're not wired up yet, so don't look over there, but once they are, they'll be set into that little term point right there. So once that's hooked up, these will be able to charge your batteries as you're driving. And again, it's going to be the same thing. We're using our two-watt cable from our batteries that will be tied up over in here. Um, and then that piece of equipment right there converts however many amps is being pushed out from the inverter to about 50 amps of charging here. This is crazy. This is, again, just another amazing piece of equipment. The second coolest thing is this doesn't just handle the actual alternator. This also handles your solar. That's right. This is a two-charging piece of equipment. So you can see right here, this red line is actually going to our breaker here, which is our PV breaker. So all of our solar panels will be also tied into this piece of equipment. I just thought it was so cool. It allows us to minimize the actual real estate that our electrical system picks up. A little bit closer in here, these are actually number two gauge wires, so not too odd anymore. These aren't gonna handle as much current as the other ones potentially could. Except for that, the alternator, of course, could have a little bit more. So that's why we're tying in a, a larger size gauge up here. There'll also be a fuse over on that side. But these smaller cables, these are number two. Up over on this one, this is number four. And that just comes with the solar PV. Again, the PV actually doesn't have a ton of current that's gonna be pushing out. I believe it's only about 30 amps. So these cables will be able to handle that perfectly. It's super important to know like how this system's gonna go. So we planned out where our solar is gonna be coming in from or the actual alternator has to be dragged to. It's just very important planning wise. Once you have a good plan set up, everything else kind of falls into place. All right, finally on to our piece de resistance. The load. So what do I mean by load? Well, load is just a term for anything that actually takes power to be used. So for instance, we have two pieces of equipment here that handle all of our load. This is gonna be a breaker box. You're probably used to seeing this outside of your home. This is AC, so alternating current that's coming from the inverter. You can see we have a couple of cables down here. This one's wired up to be the input from our actual inverter. These two going out are gonna be the two sides of our, our van build. So these go to two outlets on each side. These are just simple little 20 amp breakers here. Pretty straightforward to install, very easy to install. These will be able to handle all the current that comes from our alternating current circuits. So our fridge, any kind of appliances, our laptops when they're plugged in, anything like that. Down here is our DC equipment. So this is where all of our DC equipment's gonna be plugged into. So you can see there's these little blades, these little yellow pieces of equipment here. These are actually fuses. They're little blade fuses like you get in the car. But this is where all of our lights are going to be, the actual vent fans plugged in here, our oven, just a very cool piece of equipment where you're able to tie in all of your electronics that are on DC. So this is where the main hub is for like, let's say the lights aren't working, I'm able to unplug this fuse and then get working on the lights very, very easily, plug the fuse back in, we're good to go. So this is just a, a nice little area to tie in all of our pieces of equipment. It's all located on one side, so we're able to differentiate between our charging and our load very, very easily. Now for all of our load cables, DC is not gonna draw a ton of current out. So these are gonna be smaller. Most of these are gonna be 18 or 16 gauge wires. Again, you're just gonna have to calculate the length, how far away your pieces of equipment are. It's not that big of a deal. Most of the time you can just get away with using 14 to 18 gauge wire for any of your DC equipment especially in a van. The main components that you'll probably need for this thicker wire here are gonna be, again, your alternator, your batteries themselves, the inverter charger. So it's gonna be more of this smaller cable that gets dragged out throughout your entire van than this bigger cable. So that was a basic overview of our entire electrical system. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any questions, any answers that I can give you. I can also give you links to any equipment that I've used. I can try and help you as best as I can. I appreciate you guys watching this. If you did like it, if you wouldn't mind giving a thumbs up and subscribe, that really helps us out. We're actually trying to get to a thousand subscribers now. So thanks everyone.